Welcome to our lecture online and our next topic in uh, gravity is geosynchronous orbit and that's a very special orbit. The geosynchronous, what does that mean? Well geo means earth and synchronous means being synchronized. With other words you want to put satellites in orbit above the earth so that as the earth turns around its axis the satellite would always stay exactly above the same point on the Earth. That's what we call by geosynchronous. And of course, there's a lot of advantages in that because if you have communication satellites or television satellites, you always want to have them exactly above the receiving antennas. So that's why when people have uh, television dishes where they can get television programming from satellites in space, that satellite dish must always point directly at the satellite, and so it must stay exactly geosynchronous above the Earth. So how do we find out how high that orbit has to be for satellites to be geosynchronous? Well, remember we have the equation, the velocity of the orbit, orbital velocity, is equal to the square root of gm divided by the radius, which is the radius of the Earth, plus the height of the orbit. Okay, then we also know that the velocity is equal to distance divided by time, and that would be two times the radius over the orbital period, which is equal to 2 pi times the radius of the Earth plus the height of the satellite above the Earth divided by the orbital period. And remember, for geosynchronous orbits, the period has to be exactly the same as the orbit of, of the Earth itself, which of course we need to know what that is. So the orbital period T is equal to exactly 86,164 seconds. All right, knowing all that, Let's find out what h is supposed to be. All right, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to replace v orbital by what that is equal to. So we can go ahead and say that this is equal to uh, 2 pi times r sub e plus h over the period. So that's the orbital velocity right here. And that is equal to the square root of g m over r e plus h. Okay, so now what we've done is we've taken the equation of the orbital velocity here and set it equal to the equation of velocity as being distance over time. We're solving for h, so first of all we need to get rid of the radical. Let's, uh, let's square both sides. So when we square both sides we got 4 pi squared times the radius of the earth plus h quantity squared divided by the period squared is equal to g m divided by radius of the earth plus h. Okay, um, instead of solving for h, I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to replace r e plus h and r e plus h. I'm going to solve that just simply by r and solve for r and then later on figure out what h is because of course I know that the radius total is equal to radius of the earth plus h. So if I first solve for radius of total, I can very easily solve for h because h is equal to the radius total minus the radius of the earth. So let's replace this by simply r. So we have 4 pi squared r squared over t squared is equal to g m over r. And then putting the r over here, putting the t squared there, and putting the 4 pi squared over here, we get r cubed. r cubed is equal to g m putting the t squared over here and dividing the whole thing by 4 pi squared and finally of course to find r I need to take the cube root of both sides so r is equal to the cube root of g m t squared divided by 4 pi squared all right now all I have to do is plug in the numbers and find out what r is equal to so I'm looking for the cube root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. Multiply times the mass of the earth, that would be 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The period, which is 86,164 seconds, and we have to square that and divide the whole thing by 4 pi squared. All right, let's see what that is equal to. 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th times 86, 164 squared equals, divide by 4 and divide by pi squared equals. 
All right, so I'm going to write that down as an intermediate value, the cube root of 7.5 times 10 to the 22nd. And of course, that would be meters cubed. Now take the cube root of that. 1 divided by 3 equals, there we go. All right, took me a little while to figure out. I was making a mistake in my calculator, but now we have R is equal to 42,172 kilometers, which is equal to 42,172,000 meters. All right, so I already converted to kilometers. And if we want to convert it to miles, then we have to divide that by 1.609 equals, and that would be... Um, so 26,210 miles, 210 miles. Okay, that would be the total distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth. Of course, that is not yet H. So what we need to do now to find H, we take the total distance we find over here, which is 42,172 kilometers, and subtract from that the radius of the Earth, which is 6,738 kilometers. Oh, that's not right. I'm missing these numbers up here. It's 6,378 kilometers. I was making the earth a little bit bigger than it actually is. All right, so 42,172 minus 6,378 equals, so now half h is equal to 35,794 kilometers, which is the height above the surface of the earth, and if you want to put that into miles, Divide by 1.609, and you get, that's 22,246 miles above the surface of the Earth. All right, so quickly, uh, reviewing what we did. We want to know what geosynchronous orbit is, at least the height of that. That means that the satellites would always stay above the exact same point above the Earth as the Earth turns. So that means the time that the satellite goes around the Earth is exactly the same amount of time as the Earth takes to go once around its axis and that is equal to 86,164 seconds. So we take the orbital velocity equation, but we have to make sure we take the total radius, which is the radius of the Earth, plus the height of the orbit. So we set that equal to the velocity in terms of distance over time, and the circumference of the orbit divided by the period. We then solve this for Re plus h, but of course we're going to take this and set it equal to r, for, to make it simpler. So we solve for r, that's a cube root of this quantity right there. When we get that number, we have to make sure we subtract, um, we subtract uh, the, the radius of the Earth from that to get just the height above the Earth's surface for geosynchronous orbit. And that's how you do that.